Hey Geometry, um, for this video you're going to need your notes for section 8.3 um, and there are, uh, the title of the section is Special Right Triangles. Um, they're going to kind of branch this section off with what we did in chapter 7 where we did um, similar triangles and comparing similar triangles. Uh, so just kind of keep that in mind. Um, but there are two different types of special right triangles that they're going to have us deal with, okay? Um, one of them is a 45-45-90 triangle, okay? And I'm going to kind of show you where this kind of generates from, okay? So 45-45-90 triangle, what I want you to do is draw a box off to the side over here. Whoop, make it a perfect square if you can, okay? Uh, and then what we're going to do is we're going to label each one of those a side length of one. So maybe it's one inch by one inch by one inch by one inch, okay? And then what I'm going to do is have you draw a diagonal across here and then just kind of like think about what would happen if you would erase that like top side, okay? So we would end up with a triangle here and this would uh, be a 90 degree angle still, but splitting this square in half each one of these would be 45 degrees, okay? And so this creates a 45, 45, 90 degree triangle, okay? Now, if my two sides are one inch by one inch, okay, think about what this third side or this hypotenuse side would be inside of here, this length right here, okay? We can do that by figuring out, um, you know, or doing the Pythagorean theorem. So we have a squared plus b squared equals c squared. One squared plus one squared has to be equal to c squared, where this is my side c, okay? Uh, one squared is one, plus another one squared is one. That will give me what c squared is, and then I'll have two is equal to c squared, but then I take the square root to get what c is, so c is just gonna be the square root of two, okay? So what will happen is that every 45, 45, 90 degree triangle will be in the ratio of one and one and the square root of two. Okay, so what this, what happens here is this makes it really nice for us to just simply, um, you know, compute some things. Like, let's say I have a 45, 45, 90 triangle where uh, one of these sides is, I don't know, let's say 7. Okay, well, if this side is 7, then this side has to also be 7. And then we can figure out what this side has to be. Okay, it is just basically since this one was 1, 1, and 1 times the square root of 2, basically is what that is, this guy will be 7 times the square root of 2, okay? So I can kind of just figure out what those are uh, based on 1, 1, and the square root of 2, comparing that to, okay? 7, 7, and 7 square roots of 2. Or it would be like, um, let's say I have 3, 3, and this would be 3 square roots of 2, right? Um, they're always going to be in that relationship where these two sides are going to be the same, and that's that third side times the square root of 2. Okay, so they're going to have, to have us do some simple comparisons here. Okay, so they have it facing a different direction, which is fine. Here's the 90 degree angle. This guy's my 45, which means this other angle has to be 45 also. So I have a 45, 45, 90. And they're saying that this side is 6, right? Okay, so going off of this information, sorry, I keep making this thing fuzzy. Um, going off of this information, I have that this is 6. I know that this has to also be 6. And they want to know what this length is, okay? This guy has to be 6 square roots of 2. And that's what he will be. I could do the Pythagorean theorem if I wanted to with 6 and 6 and find that that's 6 square roots of 2. Um, but I can just do that using the special right triangle, okay? Now, this one's uh, not quite as easy. Um, so in this case, oh, come on. Sorry, my darn thing doesn't want to focus, okay? Uh, let's see. There we go. Okay, so for this one, I'm going to go ahead and draw out um, in the same direction so that they're kind of all facing the same way. Here's my 45, 45, 90, and my 45, 45, 90. I'll draw him exactly the same. Um, and what I'm going to do is take my original 45, 45, 90. This is the original guy, 1, 1, and square root of 2. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to set this up as a proportion. Um, just to kind of solve this, to make it a little bit easier to solve. Okay, so I'm just going to use one of these sides, 9 square roots of 2. That would correspond to 1, and then x will correspond to this square root of 2. Okay, so I'm going to do this over that equals this over that. Okay, and you can always set this up as a proportion. Um, even this other one, if you wanted to, you could draw a triangle beside him and set him up as a proportion if that was, if that was too hard to think about. 
Um, but let's start with 9 square roots of 2 over 1. I did this guy over this guy. Okay, my, those are my circle ones. Equals x over the square root of 2, like that. Okay, so this guy over that guy equals x over the square root of 2. And then I can just cross multiply like we did in chapter 7. Okay, so this one's the easy one. 1 times x is just going to be x, but then I have 9 square roots of 2 times the square root of 2. Okay, so let's, I'm going to write that all out. 9 square roots of 2 times the square root of 2. Okay, those two things multiplied together. All right, now the square root of 2 times the square root of 2 is like 9 times the square root of 4. That's what he would look like. But the square root of 4 just pops out as 2, right? So this doesn't make 92, okay? And it doesn't make 11. You're not adding those together. This is 9 times 2. So my x in this case would be 18, okay? Anytime you end up taking a square root of something times, a, times itself, it ends up just popping out as that number, right? Like the square root of 2 times the square root of 2 is, is 2, okay? Um, and that will end up being 18. So we know that this hypotenuse side right here is 18. This guy is 9 square roots of 2, 9 square roots of 2, and 18. That has the same relationship as 1, 1, and the square root of 2, okay? All right, so now let's do the same thing again down here. We're going to compare this guy. So I always go back to the original, okay? And the side lengths for the original are 1, 1, and the square root of 2, okay? And then I'm just going to compare. Now they have two x's here, um, just meaning that those are both the same length so that we know that this is a 45, 45, 90. But really I'm not going to use all three sides at the same time. When you're setting up a proportion, it's all always only, you know, a fraction is equal to a fraction. So one of those x's I don't need. So maybe let's cross out this one. Like let's say we're not going to use this side and we're not going to use that side, okay? Let's do 1 over x and the square root of 2 over 12. Okay, let's do that one maybe and let's see how that works, okay? So 1 over x left to right and the square root of 2 over 12. Left to right, left to right, left to right, okay? Now I just cross multiply, okay? So I've got x times the square root of 2. That's just going to look like the square root of 2x and 1 times 12 is just going to be 12, okay? All right, <clears throat> then to get x by itself, I would divide by the square root of 2, divide by the square root of 2, and I would get that x is equal to 12 divided by the square root of 2, okay? And let's just go ahead and leave our answer like that. I'm not going to have you rationalize that, um, if some of you guys know what that means. Um, a lot of times we don't like a square root in the bottom, um, but we're just going to leave that as our answer right now. So each one of these x's would end up being 12 divided by the square root of 2. Um, and that's what each side would be, okay? So I don't have to use the Pythagorean theorem anymore. I can just compare it to a 45, 45, 90, okay? And this is the original 45, 45, 90, okay? All right, now the next one is a 30, 60, 90. These, this is the second type of special right triangle, okay? And so what I want you to do is I want you to, um, we'll do it this way. Let's, let's draw um, an equilateral triangle um, over here off to the side, and I'll kind of show you how this works. But this equilateral triangle, what I want you to do is label each one with a length of 2 instead this time, okay? So 2, 2, 2, all the way around. Instead of being 1, 1, 1, we'll make it 2, 2, 2, okay? All right, then what I'm going to do is I'm going to split this guy like this, okay? So that he is split in half, kind of like we did with the box up above. And I'm going to have you pretend that this does not exist right here, okay? So basically we've lumped off the bottom and we've created a 30, 60, 90 triangle, okay? If he was an equilateral triangle to start with, each one of these angles would be 60, 60, 60, 60, right? To make 120, or uh, 180. Um, if all of those are added together, it makes 180, um, and that's an equilateral triangle. But now that I've split him in half, this will remain 60 degrees. This guy is split in half, so think about what this angle would be, like how large he would be, okay? If we split him in half, he's going to be 30 degrees, okay? And then this angle over here, like how big would he be? That's going to be a 90 degree angle, okay? So we have it facing just the way that this is right here. We have a 60, a 30, and a 90 degree angle, okay? Now, if I'm looking at my sides that are still there, okay, this side length is still a length of 2, okay? 
Now this side right here, we've split him in half. He's no longer two anymore, okay? So think about how long he would be. He is gonna be a length of one, okay? If he was two to start with, if we split him in half, he's a length of one, okay? So I'm gonna draw this down here a little bit nicer so that I have all my sides together. Here's my 90, here's my 60, here's my 30. This guy is gonna be two, this guy is gonna be one. And then I need to figure out what this third side is, okay? So I can use the Pythagorean theorem to figure that out, okay? Um, now, when you're doing your Pythagorean theorem, we need a squared plus b squared equals c squared. And in this case, 2 has to be my c. Okay, so I'm going to put that over here. 2 squared, 1, let's call him a, and then we're trying to figure out what b is. b is what we don't know right here. Okay, so let's leave him as b. All right, uh, 1 squared is 1, b squared we'll just leave, and 2 squared is 4. Okay, and then to figure out what b squared is, all right, I'm kind of going through this fast, so if you need to pause the video, um, you know, to kind of collect your thoughts, do that, all right? Uh, B squared will be 3, and this guy, if I take the square root of B squared, B will just be the square root of 3. So the lengths of a 30, 60, 90 will be in the relationship of 1, 2, and the square root of 3, okay? So what I can do then is if I have another triangle that's 30, 60, 90, just the way that this one is, and they give me that, let's say like this side is, I don't know, six, okay? Let's say this side is six. Six is like taking two and multiplying it by three, right, to get six. So what I can do is one, I can multiply by three to get three. Or in other words, like one is half of two, three is half of six, right? That's how that would work out. So if I know that this length is six, then I know this length has to be half of that because kind of like we cut it in half here, this three is uh, cutting six in half, okay? Then we have to think about what this side would be, right? Okay, this is one, two, and the square root of three. Really kind of like one square root of three. There's an imaginary one that's standing there. Well, if this number is three, then this will be three square roots of three, right? Okay, and that's what each one of those lengths are. So I can figure out those without actually having to do the Pythagorean theorem or do anything like that. I can just compare it back to this triangle. Okay, so that's what I'm going to do here for x and y. Um, I'm going to draw my 30, my original 30, 60, 90 to compare him to. Okay, so I'll put 60 here, 30 here. Okay, if it helps you to imagine, you know, kind of that, that other side to make our equilateral triangle, this is what he would look like, okay? Each of these sides will be 2, which means that this guy right here will be 1, right? And this side is the one that will be the square root of 3. Okay, so these are the sides that I'm looking at. 2, 1, and the square root of 3. That's what that third side is, okay? So we're comparing all of our information from here to this guy, okay? I kind of drew him facing the same direction, so it made it easier for us to compare. Um, and then we can just use... Uh, proportions um, and, and similar triangles like we did in chapter 7, okay? So let's say we're solving for x first, okay? So here's an x, and he his same side is going to be 1, okay? Now I want to compare him to 15 and the square root of 3 because those are the other two sides that I know. I don't want to compare y at the same time I'm comparing x because then I'll have a proportion that has two variables and I can't solve them both at the same time, okay? So Let's, let's deal with that guy first, okay? Let's say we want to do 1 over x. We would have to do the square root of 3 over 15. So 1 over x, square root of 3 over 15. You're going left to right, left to right. Now you can set that proportion up differently if you want to, but that's fine. Um, 1 times 15 will end up being 15. And x times the square root of 3 is the square root of 3x, okay? And then to get the x by itself, I would just divide the square root of 3 over. And it would be x is 15 over the square root of 3. That's what he would look like. Okay? And that's it. Um, for the y's then, okay, I can still set up the square root of 3 and 15, but then I have 2 and I have y. Those are the two that I'm comparing now. Okay? So here's my proportion. Okay? Let's start with 2 over y. 2 over y is equal to the square root of 3 times 15. Or square root of 3 over 15, not times. 
uh, 2 over y, so left to right and left to right. Okay, then again I'm going to cross multiply. Okay, so I have 2 times 15 is 30, and I have the square root of 3y. Okay, and then to get y by itself, you're going to divide by the square root of 3. And I have y is equal to 30 divided by the square root of 3. And that's how I'm going to leave my answer. Okay, so um, they won't give you um, a second triangle to compare to. You kind of have to draw that triangle, that 30, 60, 90, or the 45, 45, 90 triangle like we did here. And then you can just set up your proportions exactly the same as you always have. Okay, all right, so uh, those two, you kind of want to maybe remember what those sides are. It's a 1, 2 square root of 3 uh, for 30, 60, 90, or it's a 1, 1 square root of 2. You're going to kind of want to remember those um, special right triangles, and then it will make it a lot easier for you to, to set up these similar triangles. Um, they also will test your knowledge of that, like on the ACT, um, which a lot of you aren't going to end up taking this year, which whatever. Um, but They'll, they'll test your knowledge of a 30, 60, 90, and you can do it so much faster if you can remember um, 1, 2, square root of 3, okay, rather than having to do the Pythagorean theorem and all that stuff, okay? All right, one more question on the back side. Um, they kind of give us a story problem here. A company makes crayons that do not roll off tables um, by shaping them into triangular prisms with equilateral bases. You guys probably have seen these before. Um, they kind of look like this, and they have a triangular box uh, that they all fit in. Oh, come on. This is not wanting to focus right now. I don't know what this deal is. Uh, no, I thought it was going to go. Okay, come on, you darn thing. Search, search. Okay. Let's go here. There we go. There we go. That's a little better. Okay. So these triangular crayons are fitting inside of this triangular box. And it says that 16 of these crayons are fitting into this box shape. Okay. And we know that it's one and a half inches or 1.5 inches long. Each one is. Okay. So I need to figure out how many crayons to start with are going to fit inside of this box. Okay. So let's do this. Um, let's, I'm going to start off by drawing some triangles inside of here. Okay, so let's see. If I draw, like, let's do one layer at the bottom here. I'm going to do this, 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 this. Okay, let's start, let's start off by doing that. Okay, then the next layer would have to go, uh, oh shoot, like this. Okay, that's what my next layer would have to look like, and then there's the top. Okay, something of that nature. Now there has to be 16 of them, so I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. We only have nine, okay? So let's make him one taller, okay? Let's make him go this way. And we'll do two more there, two more there, two more there, and one at the top, okay? So uh, that was nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. There's 16 of them. Okay, so that's kind of a weird way of drawing this out. Um, but what he's going to do is he's going to have seven along the bottom here. Okay, so kind of like four bottom teeth and three top teeth to make the seven on the bottom layer. Then he's going to have three bottom teeth and two top teeth on the second layer. Third layer, two bottom teeth and one top tooth. And then this bottom tooth on the top. Okay, kind of is a weird way of saying that. Okay, so each one of these is going to be 1.5 inches this whole thing, this whole thing is 1.5 inches, and this whole thing is 1.5 inches, okay? So then we've got to figure out what each one of these is going to be, um, what the dimensions of each one of them is going to be, okay? Now, as we're taking a look through here, even though there's seven of them on the bottom, okay, really these four, I call them bottom teeth, are going to be the only ones that are making up this bottom side, right? So this, this length, plus this length, plus this length, plus this length, is making up um, the 1.5 inches, okay? So really, that's kind of like taking 1.5 and dividing by 4, that would give me what the length of each one of those is, okay? So if this is one of my triangles, this is going to be 1.5 divided by 4, okay? If I take 1.5 and divide by 4, I think that's like, I don't know, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta do it. This is too much 
for my brain. Uh, 0.375 is how many inches this would be wide here, right? Each one of these would be 0.375, okay? Now looking at this side right here, okay, this length here, okay, that's another four of them that's measuring up to be 1.5. So this length here is going to be 0 0.375 also, okay? Now, the other thing that they want us to do is they want us to look at the height of this of each one of these little crayons. So the base here is going to be 0 0.375. They want to know what the height is here, okay? So we can look at that, all right? Now, which triangle are we going to compare this to? Are we going to compare this to a 45, 45, 90 or 30, 60, 90, okay? Well, if you think about what this, this guy is right here, each one of these is going to be 60s because they're all equilateral triangles, right? 60, 60, 60, okay? Now, if I compare that to a 30, 60, 90 like this, okay? My 30 degree angle's at the top, 60's at the bottom, here's a 90 degree angle. So pretend that I just take that guy and I lump him off, right? Okay? Ugh, I'm still really fuzzy. Sorry. Uh, nope. Why are you not focusing? There we go. That's a little better. Okay. Uh, 30, 60, 90. So in this case, for this triangle here, we have this is 0 0.375. Okay. This bottom side here is only from here to here. That's going to be half of the 0 0.375 already. So if I take half of that, this is going to be 0 0.1875. Oh, that's really ugly numbers. And then we need to figure out what this length is right here. Okay, um, so let's do this. This triangle here, um, if I make this a 30, 60, 90, this would be 2, 1, and a square root of 3. And then I could figure out what this third side is. Okay, that x right there. All right, so I'm going to do like x over the square root of 3, and let's do like 0 0.375 over 2. Okay, so x over square root of 3, 0 0.375 over 2. Top to bottom, top to bottom. Okay, then I'm just going to cross multiply. And because we're already dealing with decimals anyway, let's just go ahead and leave them as decimals. So I have 2x, and let's take that 0 0.375 times the square root of 3. And I got uh, 0 0.65, let's say. Okay, now divided by 2. Let's do 0 0.325. 0 0.325 is what that is going to be. Okay, so I have that. Each one of those little crayony things, as messy as this is, the bottom side here is going to be 0 0.375, and this height here, that guy, is going to be 0 0.325, so slightly smaller than that, inches, okay? And uh, that's the base and the height of each one of those crayons. So what are the dimensions of each crayon? That's what they will look like. Base is this guy, the actual height um, is going to be 0 0.325, okay? All right, that is all I have.